this house here is where the shooter lived, or his grandmother. This house here is where my grandson lived. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What happened to you all day can happen anywhere, and it will happen anywhere if we don't pay attention. During a trip to Uvalde shortly after the shooting, Sean Smith, the president of Black Push, met the mayor of town. Later that year, I traveled with Sean and a team from Black Push back to Uvalde. The mayor met us at the San Antonio airport. I was eager to start speaking with him, and so I began asking him questions on the way there. Um, how would you describe it to someone who has never been there? You know, uh, Uvalde's a, 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 just a good, small, town, rural America. It's a good community, and Uvalde's a strong community. It's a close-knit community. Uh, you know, it's 17,000 people now, or 15, 15 16,000 people. You don't know everybody, but you know everybody. It described it in terms that anyone might describe their hometown, and described its response to the tragedy in terms that any one of us might hope that we would describe our town's response to such a tragedy. You know, one thing about Uvalde and any Anything that's ever come up, they've always pulled together as a community to get through. I mean, you've seen numerous bake sales, barbecue plate sales, Mexican plate sales, uh, you know, to raise money for these families and, and not only those that were that lost children, but even those that were injured. I made this chart based on information that is readily available online. This raises the obvious question, what on earth happened in the 2010s? I thought maybe this can be explained by a simple rise in population, but no, the US population is growing at a nice and steady rate. One popular narrative is that the shooting at Columbine High School in 1999 marked the beginning of an epidemic of school shootings. The attention and publicity it received served as an inspiration for the school shootings that followed. But school shootings happened before Columbine, and their frequency actually went down after the 1990s. I did another search and graphed some data that revealed another startling graph. It's not just schools. Mass shootings rose in roughly the same stark shape in the 2010s, suggesting a larger societal issue. I thought back to the work of a professor of mine, Albert Borgman. One of the books that he taught was Bowling Alone. The book gets its title from the fact that Americans were, at the end of the 20th century, bowling in higher numbers than before, but that they were bowling alone instead of in leagues. It argues that there was a significant decline in what it calls social capital, that we have become increasingly disconnected from family, friends, neighbors, and our democratic structures. Borgman argued that the major force contributing to this was the rearrangement of the American living room from around the hearth to around the TV set. As people got to stay home and watch TV, they stopped going out and meeting with others. When I grew up in Uvalde, everybody participated in everything. And it kind of got away from that. You know, it, it, Why do you think, what changed? People got busy, you know, people moved away, people didn't, you know, at first they didn't, you know, oh, I'm too busy, I don't have time, and this, and, and you know. May I ask when that was roughly? That probably started in, you know, that probably started in the, I'm gonna say the, the late 90s, early 2000s. What major shift in the culture happened around the turn of the 21st century? Let's look at some other charts I made. Here's the number of internet users over the same period. Sale of smartphones in billions of dollars. Number of Facebook users. The shape of these charts eerily resembles the shape of the charts on school shootings and mass shootings. Correlation does not mean causation, sure. But ask yourself, do our cities and towns feel more or less like connected communities because we have cell phones in our hands and TVs in our living rooms? For me, the answer is less. The one thing that we're lacking in our community 
We don't have anything for our youth to do. The bowling, we used to have a bowling alley. The bowling alley is no longer there. We don't have a rec center for the kids. You know, I mean, they're dependent on the, the whatever activities the school offers or, you know, whatever activities we can offer. But, I mean, some of the equipment in our park, Memorial Park, has been there since I was a kid in e You know, one of the important things would be this rec center would give not only be a, a, a place these kids could call theirs, but it would also serve as a community center also too. Maybe we'll find that diamond in the rough, that, 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 that person is considered a loner or left out, or you know, maybe he was teased or bullied, and that's something we've got to, to look at. And we've got to try to reach out to these people and, and to these kids and let them know that there are people that care about them and people that do love them and, and, and want to help them and want to see things good. To help Black push combat gun violence across America, scan this QR code.